Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these fabulous Empire lampshades from one of our great creative craft kits. So, first of all, what can you do with this shade? So if you want to use a woven fabric in your home, you might have a particular pattern in mind or a design or a colourway that will go with your interior, these kits are perfect because you can simply adapt the kit to match your home. So anything goes really in terms of fabrics, but it just has to be a woven fabric. So the Empire line, they're slightly narrower at the top, wider at the bottom, a really lovely kind of traditional shape. They're often known as a retro empire, I think maybe because of the 60s, that kind of shape. Look great on a small lamp like this one, even on a standard lamp if you have a taller lamp or as a pendant light as well. So really good sizes. They come in 25, 30, 35 and 40 centimetres in diameter and that's the diameter across the top there. So let's have a little look and see what's in the box. First of all on the outside of the box your covering is here so you can see for this one you need um, 82 centimetres by 32 centimetres which actually isn't a lot of fabric so if you're a cushion maker or a curtain maker these are a really good addition um, to add on to maybe products that you're um, making and selling to people but they're also great if you've just got a piece of fabric at home that you really love and you want to see it more in your home. So in the box itself we have the kit and I'm just going to run through the components. Whoops. So first of all we have our rings. There's two rings in this kit as with all, all of them. This one is your plane so um, this is your bottom ring that will sit at the bottom of the shade. They're epoxy coated these rings as well and then this is your duplex ring and this sits with the smaller ring on the inside of the shade. So this is the top opening of the shade. We also have your PVC and that's handily rolled up for you in your box. I've got one here on the table that's already flat. Um, and as you can see, this has already been cut to shape and you'll notice the kind of arc. So let me just turn it that way round and you can see how that's going to form the shape of your Empire lampshade. So the panel itself all cut to size for you so you don't even need a tape measure for this. And it also has this kiss cut cut into it. So if I just push that back gently, you can see that that's a groove that's cut along the length of the shade at the top and at the bottom and we're going to use that later to create the perfect fabric margin. So just to flip over, you'll see it's got grid lines, this is a sticky back PVC panel and this panel is the real McCoy. So it's professional and it's high quality and it's exactly what you'd expect in a lampshade on the high street. So it's anti-yellowing, anti-static, and it's also been quite a lot of, through quite a lot of rigorous testing, including the Lighting Association Labs, but most importantly of all, it's fire resistant. So you're guaranteed that you're using a really high quality product. So what else have we got here in our box? So we also have our double-sided tape. Now this is a high-tack double-sided tape. And as you can see now, when I undo it, it's flexible, it's transparent, and it also has a red backing tape on it. So the actual tape itself is clear, um, and we're going to be using that to hold our shade together. And then we also have our finishing tool. And the finishing tool is just for at the end, we're going to be tucking all of the fabric from the top and the bottom underneath and round the frame to give it that really professional quality look. So we have a point and two long edges and then also a serrated edge as well and I'll show you how to use that. So let's just pop those to one side. Finally we have our instruction sheet. So this is a really detail detailed photo pictorial instruction sheet, takes you through all 
of the steps that you need to know to make up your Empire Shade. It also has hints and tips throughout as well, uh, so you can follow those as you're making up. So just before we get started on making up the shade, the only things you'll need at home to make it up are a clean flat surface, you'll need a pair of fabric scissors, or alternatively a craft knife. If you're using a craft knife, you do need to protect your tabletop with something like a cutting mat. And then another handy tool to have is a seam roller. And the seam roller, you might have this for say card making or even for wallpapering, you can use this to seal the seams of the lampshade closed as well. So let's get started. First of all, just a word on fabrics. So just to show you the fabric I'm using, this is a beautiful dashwood print and it's a craft cotton, which is quite lightweight. You can use up to a medium weight cotton as well. Uh, you do need to think about the light that your shade will give off. Um, I wouldn't use a stretch fabric just simply because it doesn't adhere well to the back of the PVC panel and it can stretch out of shape. And really what you want is a lovely, crisp, professional finish. So stick with a woven if you can. So first of all, I'm just going to place my fabric, as you can see, with the right side down on the table. And I'm just going to pop my panel with the sticky back backing down. So just going to choose where I'm going to position this. And I'm just looking at my pattern to see which points I'm going to use. So I'm just going to pop it there. This is quite an all over print, but one thing to note actually is that this is directional. So with this particular shade, you can't use it upside down. So if you have something growing like flowers or trees, or it might be people, vehicles, something that needs to stay the right way up, you must think about where you're positioning your panel at this stage. Uh, because once we go beyond and we've cut out, it's too late. So think about if you have anything growing up. I have, I've got lots of beautiful flowers here that are all growing upwards. So I need to make sure that this is the top and this is the bottom. Okay, so let's get started on putting this on. So now I've found my position and I'm just gonna use those two points of the flower and the butterfly there. All we need to do is peel back around about five to 10 centimeters of the sticky back and place that down. So we're rubbing the PVC just to keep that in place. And that's our starting point. And then we're just going to pop our, our hands underneath, find the loose backing and start pulling that away. And again, five to 10 centimeters at a time. And just keep pulling the backing away. And as you get more confident, you can pull a little bit more than the five to 10 centimetres. And we're just making sure here that our fabric stays nice and flat as we're adhering the lampshade PVC on. There we go. So that's all down. Just give it a rub over to make sure. And just before you go any further, I was just like to flip over and make sure that all looks good from the fabric side. And it does. It's just in case you get any little frays caught under there or anything that might have been on your table. So that's looking really good. And now we're going to cut out. So I like to start on the short end and I use fabric scissors, but of course you could use a craft knife and just get to the edge. And all we're doing is using the PVC as a guide. And then again, just along the top edge. There we go. And then back round again to the short edge. There we go. Just 
pop those to one side. So we've now cut that to shape and we're just now going to deal with the kiss cut. So the reason that this is here is to create a margin of fabric. So all we're going to do is simply fold that back. So just be gentle and you'll hear the sound of it starting to break open. And we're doing that on both the top and on the bottom. There we go. And we're just going to peel this top margin away. So peeling away the kiss cut. I like to push down with the main panel and lift up with the kiss cut margin. And then we're just simply going to peel that away. Now you'll see some fraying there and we peel it away quite gently for that reason. Because even though the fraying isn't a real problem, we don't want to particularly encourage it. Same again, pushing down and lifting up. So just before we finish with the panel, we've just got one final step. So just need to take your double-sided tape and I just like to run a strip of tape just along the short edge. So this should sit on the PVC, shouldn't be on the fabric. And then I'm just going to snip that at the bottom before it reaches the fabric there. So we're already done with our panel, so you can see how straightforward that was. This is a beginner's project really, uh, you don't need any previous experience to be able to do this, so it makes it great if you're just looking to do something completely different. So we're now going to cover our rings with the double sided tape, and this is the bit that holds the whole frame together. So I'm just going to take my ring and pop the tape on. What we're looking for is for the frame to sit between the two sides of the tape edge. So we're looking for it really to be central and just moving the tape along slowly, keeping the ring central. So just moving it slowly. And as you approach the meeting point where the two ends meet, just simply leave a little gap, pop your scissors in and snip. And by leaving that gap, that does two things. So firstly, you can see where the join is. And secondly, if you overlap them, sometimes it's quite difficult to get that red uh, backing off the tape later. So it just makes it easier for us. Now this bit's quite important. So just taking our fingers and thumbs, we're just literally going to roll the tape around the ring. So rolling the tape round and the reason we do this is, is we want this ring to be covered with as much of the tape as possible because this is what's going to be holding our shade together. So there we go. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other ring, remembering that we're using the larger of the two rings. This um, is to be used to put onto your table. Uh, lamp which I'll show you later. So remembering it's the larger one. Exactly the same again. Position your tape on so that the ring sits in the centre of the two edges of the tape. And then moving it round slowly. There we go. And just folding the tape back and the same again, just leaving a tiny gap and snipping. Fingers and thumbs and just rolling the tape firmly round, covering the ring as much as possible. There we go. And don't worry about the spokes either because the tape should just sort of sit against them. So, that's our two rings now covered in tape and now we need to go on to the rolling. So we're working towards the end with the tape on and what we need to do is remember which way round our rings go. So this is the shorter edge, so if you did this, this is the top. 
So that means that the duplex ring is going to go on that side and this is the bottom with the plain ring. So I'm just going to take the tape off this part first. You need to just make sure that when you peel away, you're just lifting up the red. There we go. And we can just pop that on the table using the duplex ring there. And then just finding a point which is easy because I've left that little gap. And now we need to position this onto the PVC. So I'm just going to use both my hands to position it in place. And it just needs to be sat on the PVC. It shouldn't be touching the fabric at all at this point. So we're looking for it to just sit on the PVC. And then the same with this one. And I position them just kind of one to two millimetres. Really, just so there's a slight sharpness to that edge to give it that lo lovely crisp finish. And we're just going to roll these now. Now, because the actual PVC has a slight um, angle to it, I find it easiest to just almost roll the rings in the same direction. So just leaning them in slightly. And immediately you can see that that tape is doing its job. It's, re it's really good. We're just going to roll using our hands now at the bottom because that's a little bit easier and I tend to pull the shade towards me as I'm making it. I just find it a bit easier to be able to see what I'm doing. There we go and if you do make a mistake you can hear that sound, you can just pull it back, roll again. So if you feel it's going off track and you've not got control just do that and you'll get it back on track again and just before you get to where the tape and the seams me, I just roll it round towards myself and I'm just going to remove the back. There we go. Just peel that away and then I just like to line up flush these edges to make sure that it's all sitting right. Yeah, that's lovely. And then very gently, we're just going to pinch this together just so that the seam sits in the right place. Don't push this at this point because you can really damage the PVC by putting too much pressure on there. And then, taking my seam roller, I'm just going to roll that, putting quite a firm amount of pressure on there, just along the seam to make sure that they're stuck. Or, alternatively, you can just run it along with your finger to make sure they're together. So it's starting to really look like a shade now and it looks brilliant. Really happy with the way this is going. So next stage for us is where the seam has overlapped, the PVC and the fabric, you have double the amount of fabric. So you'll have a small square that's an overlap and we want to remove that now so we're not dealing with that kind of bulk later. This is particularly important if you're using a slightly heavier weight fabric as well. So all I'm going to do is fold down the front flap, snip in and across and remove that little fabric square on the top and then flip the shade over and do exactly the same at the bottom. So there we go. And then just starting on the the bottom actually we're just going to use our fingers and thumbs again just to fold the fabric in and what we're trying to do is just adhere the underneath to the tape so this is starting off on the finishing now so just keep tucking it round and it's making sure we've got this really lovely edge as well that I think gives it that completely professional finish. There we go. And I'm just going to do the same along the top. And when you get to the spoke, don't worry about that. That's fine. We're going to deal with that shortly. So just pushing that underneath, making sure adheres to the tape underneath. There we go. 
So we're now on to the final stage. We need to take our finishing tool. As I mentioned before, it's got the long edges and the point and then also the serrated edge as well. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this to tuck the fabric underneath the frame. So the tape will do its job and it will help it stay there. So we're just going to use either the point or the long side or the serrated edge. I prefer the point. So I'm just going to take this in my hand and it's a fairly sturdy piece of, um, of plastic this. So it, you can give it a little bit of welly, just pushing there and that's going under lovely. So you might hear a little bit of a cracking sound every now and then. And what that is, it's just the tape lifting up from the PVC and just then allowing us to push that in. So that's kind of quite nice positive noise. There we go. And because we prepared by pushing all the fabric down before, we've got a nice tight crisp edge. So there we go, this is going in really easily. And if you get any loose frays, just simply use the long edge to just kind of sweep those round. It's quite therapeutic this actually. And I'm already back round to where I started. So that's the bottom edge all done. I'm just going to go around one more time just to make sure there's no loose frays. A little bit stuck out there we go and then we're going to do exactly the same on the top so just finding my seam again just simply going to tuck in from this side and when you get to a spoke we're just simply going to lift the fabric up a little take the tips of our scissors line them up with the spoke and just cut and you only want to cut to the frame, to the round frame on the top. Um, not any further, because you don't want that little split to be showing actually on the shade. So there we go. And I'll just do the third and final one. So there we go. So back to my seam. And when I come up to one of the spokes, I'm just going to use the tool to tuck the fabric behind. There we go. And if this becomes a little bit bent, as mine has there, you can simply cut off a section and that should sharpen your point for you. There we go. So I'm just going to swoosh around now with the long side. Make sure I've got all those little bits in, which I have. Lovely. That's it, we're done. So I think you'll agree that this Empire shade looks really good, really professional, lovely fabric, nice and bright, and is going to look fantastic in a home. So because the Empire shade uses a duplex fitting, this is really easy to use with one of our shade carrier systems. So just let me take that off and bring this here. This is a shade carrier, as you can see. This is a four inch or a 10 centimetre. And all we need to do is have our bulb in here. You simply lift up the shade over the top and that fits on there. And we have these in different heights, depending on how you want your shade to sit on your lamp base. If you're looking to hang this with a pendant light from the ceiling, you simply need a spider and you would have your spider simply pop your shade on top. You can see that there and then connect that to your pendant light fitting. So really easy to use. I think you'll agree, a great kit so I hope we've inspired you to make these either for yourself, for your home, maybe even for friends or family, or maybe even part of a lampshade business. So thank you for watching.